This is the place everyone wants to be come summertime. Welcome to Comic-Con, folks. San Diego Comic-Con International. Held at the San Diego Convention Center since 1991, Comic-Con has become the largest convention of its kind on the planet. It's where you see celebrities shine, where pop culture reigns, and fans will do just about anything to get inside Hall H. Many people say it's the coolest convention in the world. So the guy who manages this event at the convention center, well, he must have the coolest job in the world, right? Who is this superhero behind the superheroes? My name is Tim Pontrelli. I'm a senior event manager. I've worked uh, since 1983 on Comic-Con. Most of the, the same people that, that managed it back then, I still work with today. Tim Pontrelli has three decades of Comic-Con under his utility belt. Digging through our photo archives, the first pictures we could find are from the Comic-Con convention in 1992. The big star at that event, Mr. T. And the costumes weren't quite what you find today. Neither was the crush of 130,000 fans. It was more like 4,000 people. So we asked him, what was it like in those early years? The first Comic-Con that I worked, it was all volunteers. It was uh, young uh, elementary and high school students as the security. They were in Golden Hall and Plaza Hall, which is the Convention and Performing Arts Center. And they had the art show on a couple of pegboards. And it literally was uh, milk crates with comic books in all of the milk crates. As the event grew over the years, Tim noticed his waistline starting to shrink, so to speak. At one point, when it was just me doing it in the early 2000s, I would lose about 15 pounds. And I was walking probably anywhere from 15 to 20 miles a day. Come in at 4 in the morning, every morning, and be walking at that point, just trying to get lines in, in control, uh, making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And that would be nonstop until I'd leave that evening. As attendance cracked 100,000 attendees in 2004, reinforcements were called in, and Tim's Comic-Con weight loss plan came to an end. Fortunately, over the last few years, it's gotten so big and aging a little bit <laughs> that uh, we actually have a team of people that actually help me now, and I'm the lead. They call me the overlord sometimes for the event. Comic-Con is so big, it spills into the city and is one of San Diego's top economic generators. Every person standing in line helps bring in approximately $177 million in economic impact. Here's the line. People just want to be part of that. I guess the closest thing would be a mini Academy Awards where they get a chance to see their celebrity. They get to see the movies that are coming up. Even Tim has time to have some fun on the exhibit floor. And he's a self-proclaimed fan of the Big Bang Theory. But as the superhero behind the show, there's no time to be starstruck. His main concern is keeping the show running smoothly and ensuring the safety and security of attendees. It is by far and away the comic book convention or Comic-Con in the world. There are a lot of imitators. It is the original and it truly has grown up in San Diego. And it's truly the, the one that everyone wants to see. It's the bucket list uh, convention that people want to come to. And thanks to Tim's superhuman powers, San Diego Comic-Con International will continue to bring thrills and chills to more than 130,000 fans.